All right, Jules, I'm going to turn it over to you. If, and again, we know not to let cup games necessarily influence how we view. Well, Liverpool had been playing better over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, when you look at this, I'm assuming you still have City as the favorite. Yeah. Okay. Liverpool, though, did they, have they closed the gap? Do you see? Because I look at this and I say, there's so much to fix in this Liverpool team, right? It, it, the potential's there, right? But the left back to come back, mm. either one at this point. I mean, I think Robertson's still going to be out a while, right? Mm. But, you know, Tsimikas at least is an actual left back. Unlike Jogo, who's out of position. And getting him back, obviously Van Dijk to return, but he will. Um, the midfield. I go back to this. Endo can't, doesn't give you the passing from midfield. He may run around a lot, but that's an issue. McAllister's now back, but then I don't think McAllister covers the same ground. That's not his position. No, no, yeah. He's a very good player. He's coming off an injury. You need to need to fix that. Lucky for you, not lucky for you because he's there, but Curtis Jones is having a really good season. Yeah. Great. Up front, I still have the same questions about Gakpo and Darwin uh, and Diaz less so. Um, if all these things click together, they can win the titles. I, I'm just wondering, how does Klopp go about fixing all these things? And Klopp, I'm sure, realizes this. Yeah. I just oh, and, and Trent, too. Because we saw when he moves into midfield, as he did in the latter stages of this game, he can be devastating in that role. He has a defensive shortcomings, perhaps, although maybe people exaggerate them a little mm, bit. Yeah. <clears throat> does he then make, make a call to move him? No. I... How do you? I mean, there is a chance that Liverpool could all come together and be a match for Manchester City. Yeah, yeah they will improve, and th let's not forget that they will host City in the second half of the season. So, I think that's a huge advantage in the in the title race, which would be tight between them two. But also, I think Aston Villa somewhere. I think Arsenal will be amongst that too. There's still a lot of points that could be dropped, and we've said it before. But Liverpool, being where they are now, without being at their best by far is really interesting for them because so when you say fixing he, there's no time to fix though so he will be he will be the same it will be the same players the same system nothing is going to change McAllister now is back from injury he will play as a six and he will have to improve on the fly yeah and I think collectively they will also improve I'm a little bit more worried about Salah's absence to be fair for example Liverpool will have to go back to the Emirates against Arsenal at the start of February without Salah February unless 4th. unless Egypt are out which I don't think they will be um, because yesterday, clearly, the plan to replace Salah, and again, I said it before on ESPN Plus on the coverage of the show, if it was just Salah, maybe it would have been slightly easier to, to try to find a replacement. The fact that Soboslai was also out, so of that right-hand side triangle with Trent, Soboslai and Salah, you lost two-thirds of that. And so it's not just finding who you replace Salah with, like let's say Harvey Elliott, because he's the only left-footed in that team, apart from Salah, in those positions. It's also finding the right chemistry between whoever will replace Soboslai and Salah and make them play together. And clearly Klopp was not happy because he changed it all at halftime. So Elia moved from the Salah position to the Soboslai position. And then Gakpo was in Soboslai position, moved into the number nine. And we had Luis Diaz coming into the Salah position. I'm not sure Diaz is the right guy for that position. But then if you don't think that anyone can replace Soboslai. So I think Klopp, I think Klopp wanted Elia to replace Salah, right? The problem is, I think Elliot is better in that Soboslai role than Gagpo is, and that really nobody else is. So I think the Soboslai issue, even if it's a short-term injury, I think he'll be back in two weeks or three weeks. It's not too bad. However, I still think it's a, it's a bit of an issue. So I think, I think Klopp will need to maybe tinker a little bit, but not much will change. It's just that he will hope that they improve collectively and individually. For the ones who play out of position, for the ones who are in the best position, but maybe not at the best yet, a bit like uh, Luis Diaz, a bit like Darwin, a bit like um, you know Gakpo when he plays, all of that. But but still, there must be so much momentum and confidence in that dressing room right now, considering all all of that we've just said, that they they were surely looking at the second half of the season, thinking like, yeah, we can we can go and win everything: the Europa League, the FA Cup, the League Cup, the League, everything really. I I think this is where a manager really earns his onions. Uh, after a game like this, when you know these Liverpool players aren't stupid, they'll be doing the video review, they know what happened. They'll know that they were played off the park in the first 45 minutes. And depending how you spin the message, 
And obviously, as a manager, you can come in and you say, hey, that wasn't you in the first half. Yeah. You guys are the guys in the second half, but you can be even better, right? I, I presume this is what Klopp is telling him. Mm. Anybody can say that, but you have to make it believable. They have to believe that and not dwell on the insecurities of the first half when you have Reese Nelson, who's, you know, tearing you apart down the left-hand side. And but this is a pattern of the season, to be fair. I've, I think we've said it before, all the late goals they've scored, so the equaliser at City, for example, late, that, that, that late trend goal, the first goal and the two goals yesterday, uh, the goal at Palace, there's a lot of games that they won late at Wolves, I think, they scored late maybe. There's a lot of games where they came back either for a draw, Luton away, that late Jazz goal, where the first half is often average for, for, for this kind of team, for this level. Right. And then the second half, whether it's the, the substitution that clubs make, and we've said before, when you can bring on Jota and Gravenberg off, off your bench, it's, it's, it's great to have as a coach, it's a luxury to have. And yesterday he made his first changes at 58 minutes, which is quite early. He often does it around the, the hour mark, but more often than not, it's after the hour mark. So 63rd, 65th, 67th sometimes. Yesterday was a, a little bit earlier and, and, and it kind of worked. And I just think like that character also to never panic, as we said before, and to come back late in games where you've struggled at times, even against smaller teams than Arsenal, that surely is a huge See, guarantee. I, I, I'm conditioned to generally judge managers by what they do tactically and how they help improve players individually. I think those are the two mainstays. This whole motivation, metaphysical, self-belief, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, You know, you can say that about anybody after the fact. Mm. But with Klopp, I'm on board with it. I genuinely think he does what you're saying because it happens time and again. Now, he has to pick up the other side of it. He has to get them playing better. He has to get these individuals to improve. Yeah. Uh, Darwin, okay, as I see it, Luis Diaz, I think he's got other levels to go to. And I don't think he's been, he's been the issue. Because even when Luis Diaz plays badly, he always has that threat. He can yeah, go past yeah. you any time or whatever. Darwin, <sighs> I think he's near his ceiling. Gakpo, I don't know if there's more to come. I, I, the idea of Gakpo as a Bobby Firmino type, eh. you know, I, I don't know that he has a personality. I don't know that he has the, 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 the vision, the intelligence to do that. He looks to me like somebody who kind of, you know, manager tells him, do these five things, and he does those five things, but he doesn't give you any value add. Yeah, um, no, he's a, I think for me he's a sub in that team. McAllister, you know, this is not his position. He's relearning a position, and he's been injured. I don't think he's a long-term solution there. I think he's a long-term solution to Liverpool's midfield, of course, but yeah. McAllister and Sobosly with a proper defensive midfielder behind them. Or uh, ideally somebody who can also pass. Yeah. Uh, Kwanzaa, you told me after you made his debut, like, oh no, he's good. And I, I, I think he's done a job. It's yeah, easier yeah, to I play when you've good. got Konate monster in the opposition. Oh, but Konate. there's so many little things yeah, to yeah. work on. Yeah, but there's little things in, in every team all the time. Always, you know, this is not. Yeah, there's fewer things in Man City that you really need yeah, to fix. I'm but. not so sure. <laughs>